thanks for staying with us. Once in every 10 days, we read in the newspapers or see in the news that a brothel racket has been busted. A girl at your doorstep, call now. These are some familiar lines that we see. Our crime reporter Salim explains the complete modus operandi of this ugly flesh trade. The statistics are shocking. 18 pimps were arrested in suburban Chennai in the last one year alone. 24 girls were rescued in the last one year and were sent for rehabilitation at the government home in Mylapur. But what is even more shocking is that some of the girls are back in the trade. Our uh, suburban commissioner got some secret information about a uh, known uh, flush trade in uh, Porur area. So immediately our team uh, rushed to the spot. We are uh, secured that uh, pimp and we are rescued three, sorry, two innocent uh, ladies from that house. Here's how the flesh trade mafia operates. The pims are guided by those who have been in the business for long. Sona Lakshmi arrested under Gunda's Act in 2009 but out on bail within three and a half months. Kannada Prasad arrested under Gunda's Act in 2008 but out on bail within nine months are some of the known names in the business. So we are uh, now targeting an organized uh, prostitution. Uh, notorious uh, flesh traders like Sona Lakshmi and Kannada Prasad also doing, they are doing in Chennai city and the suburb. So we are targeting on them only. Police say the trade has become more organized. With the help of technology, the information on number of girls, where they are, etc. are maintained. The flush traders usually select an isolated house like this one behind me and pose as a family. The police say while the business would continue here, the girls are made to travel and work from the many cities they operate from. The pimp gets 70% of the income and the girls usually between 20 and 28 years of age get only 30%. But that, according to the police, is still good enough. Because most girls are economically backward. In Chennai with camera person Kasi Salim for NDTV Hindu. In national news, the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Maya Vati caught in the eye of a growing storm over her money mala has called an emergency meeting today of all her party MPs, MLAs and ministers. According to sources, the Garland controversy, the bees at her rally and the low turnout are likely to dominate the agenda. Meanwhile, the DIG will head the investigation into the bees at Maya's rally. The party is clearly taking the issue very seriously. Earlier, party workers alleged that someone deliberately let the bees out to cause chaos and a possible stampede at the rally. In news from the state, the leader of the Janata Party, Subramaniam Swami, has said that he will go ahead with the case against Telecom Minister A. Raja in the 2G spectrum distributions issue. But Swami said he will wait for Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to sort out the issue by Sunday. Swami added that he would, be, he would back efforts to return to the ballot system in elections to replace electronic voting. He also said he would work for the happiness of Sri Lanka's Tamil community. I have virtually now got the sanction for uh, prosecuting Raja on 60,000 crores worth of 2G spectrum allocation. If you had the CDMA racket also with it, uh, then uh, it will be 100,000 crores. And uh, I have however given the Prime Minister a deadline till 21st March. Moral policing in Tamil Nadu seems to be a never-ending debate. After Khushbu was targeted for her comments on premarital sex, it's now women poets who are drawing fire. More than a year after their poems were published by them, Hindu groups are up in arms about their explicit nature. Call it a publicity stunt or moral policing, it has sparked a heated debate in literary circles. Shabir Ahmed reports. Kavidei in the Karpane, Vandu, or Alo Kadigman, Abbas, one more you, sexium, Tundra, the Marker, the Patone, Sagi Kemudila. As them to please go visit our temples, as them to like just have a glance at all the statues. The war of words has begun between members of Hindu Makal Kachi and women writers. The latest controversy involves a poem by documentary filmmaker Lena Mani Megalai, posted on her blog. This has triggered anger among the party men, forcing them to take the matter to the police. The party demands action against the poet under sections 292 and 293 of the Indian Penal Code for selling obscene material, and under section 67 of the Information Technology Act 
for publishing obscene material in electronic form and under indecent representation of women act karuthu sodandra endra per la vandu ninga nenachadhu elidira mudiyadhu adarku or ellai vendum dhaan naanga kekkorom karuthu sodandram aduthavargalai kochai paduthuvadhu aduthavargalai thoondada irukkira varaikum adu karuthu sodandram ellarku undu dhaan lena mani megale is not new to controversy she has long been in conflict with right wing groups who have accused her of being a radical feminist and this new controversy doesn't seem to have ruffled feathers this is a big threat for free expression so nobody's no, nobody can i mean um, uh, stop me from writing um hello let me write write and write and face this um this kind of reactions as well it is not just lena mani megale who is in the line of fire hindu makkal katchi also targets tamil poets kutti revathi and malathi maitrey the chennai city police have forwarded the complaint to its legal cell meanwhile women's rights activists are gearing up for yet another battle for freedom of expression in chennai with camera person balu shabir ahmed for ndtv hindu kavita murlidharan a poet and a serious senior correspondent with the week and j satish advocate joined me earlier to discuss this topic here is what they had to say if you are going to call these poems obscene then obscenity has always been part of tamil uh, tradition even bhakti tradition we've had uh, poems of andal i mean uh, i mean which are like very sexually explicit poems uh, craving for sexual intimacy with the lord so coming i i see all these women writers as coming from the tradition of andal if you are going to question these writers you will have to start from andal who was who wrote 2000 years ago so i think that way it completely beats me what's really objectionable to uh, these people so i completely agree it's a culture of intolerance i can i can actually show so many male poets and male writers who also write uh, uh, sexually explicit or such things but uh, i don't i it, uh, it i don't know there is no uh, voice of protest against uh, those things when a man writes it or speaks about it see obscene you cannot define anything as obscene as such mm mm-hmm. okay every in every case it has to be depend on the facts and circumstances of each and every case will be deci- the court will be deciding on the what is obscene how will affect the public mind mm-hmm. how the public will the view as uh, such there are certain things which law puts restriction on certain things if you say your freedom of speech and expression there are certain restriction on your freedom of free speech and expression you cannot speak everything In entertainment news, Shahid Kapoor and Kareena had shot a film years ago before they broke up. The film Milenge 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 is now ready for release, but will the stars promote it? He is going to be in another 2 years he's going to be the biggest superstar. That was then. Now, of course, Bebu singing a very different tune about former boyfriend Shahid Kapoor. He may still be climbing the ladder to the top, but the relationship which catapulted him into the limelight I think uh, to a certain extent yes there is always uh, a certain repo which which comes across on screen has been kurban to Karina's love for the chote nawab kai saalon se ek insaan ko jab qaid ke andar bad rakho phir wo jo chhootta hai to ye bulbul to phir wo jo jo bulbul phir phir wo ghodon ke sath bhagta hai but the two actors had said that their parting would not interfere with promotions what promotions you may well ask well the much talked about still to be seen milenge milenge and now that the rounds have begun the name's title will not be reflected in the pr plan but it's not the stars insisting on it it's the producer apparently boni kapoor feels that he doesn't want double the trouble he said we are getting shahid and karina to do separate promotional activities that way we give them the space to be comfortable with the situation and also we get twice the publicity for milenge milenge that we would if the pair promoted the film jointly double the publicity is great but a rare glimpse of shahid and bebe together is a clincher for getting curious fans fed up over the film mr kapoor we do hope you are listening help promotion or not we hope to get entertained as much as we did in jump we met still ahead a young golfer in the making that's coming up in a moment